to this point, I've just been teaching you how to use logs. Um, now we have to get to the point why. Okay? And actually, um, maybe there's a lot of things in math that I can't say, well, you need it for this. But actually, um, whenever you put money in the bank, and you're like, how long would it take to get to this amount? The only way you can do it is by using logarithms. Okay? There is no other way. Now, I'm going to just teach you actually another way to do logs depending on the purpose of what you're trying to find. Now, we're going to go right to page, next page, 234. Okay? Now, you can cross this one out over here because we're going to use, we're going to do A and C. Now, A, you kind of have two options to be able to do this. But if we want this in the form log M over log N, that is actually called the exact value, okay? Um, the three decimal places is not the exact value. That is an approximate value. So if I was going to solve this, well, I need to, to find that exponent. The way that we did, did it before was by doing log 4 of 12 equals x. Now, what's always the point whenever you've been doing algebra since grade 7 is to get x all by itself, and then you can find x. You see how when it's at that exponent, it's pretty hard. You're kind of guessing at that point. Now, if we were to write it in this form, that would be log 12 over log 4. That would equal x. Okay? Okay, now, what is that answer? One point seven nine two, right? Wants to three decimal places. Now I'm going to teach you another way to be able to do these that and again, another way may be something you're going to say, oh, like the more I'm learning, the more I'm get confused. If you can keep these ways straight and you start using them enough, um, you'll see that, oh yeah, I can only use this one here. I can't use the other one, okay? But there is a another way. I'm going to show you a new way to do A. And the way I'm going to teach you how to do A, you can use for B, or sorry, for C, that the way we just did right now won't work. Okay, do you see, see how it's kind of weird now? If I did that, I still got an exponent, like I got an X in my logs, I can't free up an X. In A I could, C I can't. So here's another way that you can do A, is if you take every number in the question and raise it to a log, then it's mathematically correct. So if I go log 4 of x equals log 12. Now, when I do that log, there's actually an invisible 10 here. So that 4 and 12 will always be on second level. When I put each to a log, now, what is the advantage of doing that? It puts the x on third level. Whenever you can get x's on the third level, you can free them. If that makes any sense. When they're an exponent, they're held captive there, and they're actually keeping the base, too. When you move something to the third level, you can move it out front, right? So then you have x log 4 equals log 12. And now... What is x doing to the log right now? Multiplying. So I can divide out log 4 to both sides. And do you see how I do get x equals log 12 over log 4? So this is the second way you can do it. We came up with four ways in the other class to do A. You could 
do like we did in number one. You could do like we do in number two. What's another way to solve for x? Common base, except 4 and 12 don't have a common base. No, because they don't have a common base either. If it was 3 and 9, they would. How else could I do A? There's two more ways, but they're only going to get this for you. Come on, you guys. Someone has to know how I can get that answer. It's pretty important. Y1, Y2. 4 to the X in Y1. Okay, try it right now. 4 to the X in Y1, 12 in Y2, and graph. Now you're going to find you're not going to see 12, are you? You're not going to see 12 because it's up. So 4 exponent X and 12, and I hit graph, okay? There's that graph. Now 12's up too high, so I'm going to take my window and I'll make Y max like 15. Okay, and I just hit second trace. Five, intersect, right? And where is that spider? He's down there. Just get him sort of close and then hit enter three times. 1.792. This is a very good tool. Now, maybe they want an exact value. But I could still put log 12 over log 14, get that decimal, and I'm pretty darn sure I got the right answer. I mean, you're not fluking off 1.792. That would be the answer. So, okay, and another way that someone had done is actually just by using common sense. So, uh, and she came up with 1.8 quite quick. And I was like, how do you do that? Well, 2 is too much, she said. 4 squared, yeah, that's right. 4 squared is 16. So she tried 1.9, then she tried 1.8, and she got pretty well the right answer, right? So thinking is the fourth way, okay? Using common sense is the fourth way. But... If you can have four little check marks beside a question on your diploma, that's probably meaning you got that one right. Okay? So, I guess we want to put, for third, make sure you do y1 equals 4 to the x, and y2 equals 12, and, and we'll get this thing, right? So, I'm going to just take a screenshot here since we're recording these notes maybe someone would like to see this little picture there we'll make it a little tiny guy there you are okay okay so now let's look at c now c i will i want to do like we did in number one so that would be these two trade, right? So that would be log 6 of 3 to the 2x minus 1 equals 3x. Now this one, weirdly enough, would kind of work because then I could put my 2x minus 1 in the front times log 6 of 3 equals 3x. Now, what would you do next if you if you did it this way? It 
divide by 2x minus 1. Now, if we did that, so I actually don't want you to write this down, but that is an obvious... Don't write this down because it's actually not right. But do you see how it's not going to help me get my x's together? Right? Now everybody knows how the 2x minus 1 was in front, right? Because I took that third level down. Now, this is the way to free it up. You actually have to multiply this. Now, I haven't done this way, actually, with the other class. I went right to the... I raised them both up. But let's try it out. I'll probably do it wrong. But Okay, so it's 2x log... 6 to 3 minus log 6 of 3 equals 3x. Okay. Now, what we want to do is get all the x's on the one side and all the non-x's on the other. So I'm going to add log 6 to 3 to get it out of there, and I'm going to minus 3x to get it over there. So I will have 2x log 6 to 3 minus 3x equals log 6 to 3. Now, is there a way I can free x up? Okay, so this is another thing that once you've seen it now, you should hopefully... I want to factor out an x out of these two things. So I'm going to take out an x. So that would be 2 log 6 of 3 minus 3 equals log 6 of 3. <coughs> now how do I get x by itself? divide it out, right? If I divide it by 2 log 6 of 3 minus 3, 2 log 6 of 3 minus 3, so then I would get x equals log 6 of 3 over, this would be log 6 of 9. Do you see how I got a 9 there? How do I get a 9 there? Because I moved the 2 up, right? So I moved this 2 up, and it became there, and 3 squared is 9. Okay. Now see if you can put this in your calculator. And see what you would get. Hopefully we get the right answer. Are we getting negative 0 0.346? Good. Okay. So this equals negative 0 0.436. So that's the right answer. The only problem is I didn't do it in this form, log m over log n. It's not in that form. So if this was multiple choice, I'd be like, huh? Now, what I would do if it was multiple choice, honestly, so I'd put this in, get this decimal, and see which other ones turn out to be the same decimal. Okay? But I'm going to show you how to do this using this way, and it's actually a lot easier. I would never do it this way. I've just always learned when there's two exponents, raise them right up. Okay? So let's just write the question down. 6 to the 3x equals 3 to the 2x minus 1. So whenever you see two exponents that are both variables, what I do is I raise them both up right away. So this would be log 6 of 3x equals log 3 of 2x minus 1. 
Now remember, there are invisible tens here. So the six and the three are on second level. Six and the three are on second level, and the three x and two x minus one are on the first. And also remember, this is like in brackets, right? So now that they're in the third level, I can bring them out front. So this would be x log six, I mean three x log six, sorry. And 2x minus 1 log 3. So right away, I have much less mess than doing it the other way. Now, same thing goes, though. You think, oh, let's divide 2x minus 1 out. Not going to help me. So you want to distribute this, and you'll get 3x log 6 equals... 2x log 3 minus 1 log 3. Or you could just put minus log 3 if you want, right? Because 1 times log 3, or negative 1 times log 3 is negative log 3. Same rules apply with the other one. I'm going to take the x's and get them all on one side. So 3x log 6. Yep, I make a mistake. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so I have 3x log 6 minus 2x log 3 equals negative log 3. All I did was get the x's all on the one side. And I'm still going to do that next step where I'm going to factor out the x, leaving me with 3 log 6 minus 2 log 3 equals negative log 3. I forgot my bracket. Okay. Now I'm going to divide those both out, just like I did in the last one. So that will be x equals negative log 3 over 3 log 6 minus 2 log 3. Now, you put that in your calculator, you will get negative 0 0.346. But we can do more with this. We can simplify that bottom a lot. So if this was a multiple choice, what you see there, it isn't log m over log n yet. So what can we do with that, that bottom? You see, anyone see any ways to tidy that up? Yeah, if you move the 3 up and the 2 up, you will get x equals negative log 3, I don't have much room here, over log 6 cubed minus log 3 squared. Okay? Can we tidy that up a bit more? What is 6 squared? I mean 6 cubed. That should be a cubed. What is 6 cubed? So, x would equal negative log 3 over log 216 minus log 9. Now, can I simplify that even more in the bottom? You can divide 216 by 9, right? When two logs are subtracting with the same base, there's a base 10 there, what's 216 divided by 9? So x would equal negative log 3 over log 24. And now I have given them what they wanted, log m over log n. Now, if you look at the amount of work you need to do to get that to exact answer, 
awesome written response question on a test, right? I can follow that quite well. The thing is, how organized can you keep yourself? How can you be with the brackets and the, because really, after we got to here, all we did was try and make the bottom tidier. That's all we ever did. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do a question. We're going to do example three. I think this is a great question. Um, in Stats Canada, the 21st century, Canada's population has been growing at an average rate of 1%. The exponential equation, therefore, is population is population naught times 1.01 to the n. And it can be used to predict the population. P years of a known population, PO. Now, P naught means now or at the at the beginning now it says if the population at the beginning of 2001 was approximately 30 million estimate in which year the canadian population will reach 50 million assuming the same average annual growth rate now mathematics is very different from reality mathematics does not take into account famine does not uh you know disease war all those things, um, because, you know, how do we know what's going to happen in the next 10 years, 20 years, whatever, right? So this is called theoretical math. It's kind of like you go to, you do a bunch of stats on some horses at the track, and you get, oh, this one's going to come in first, second, third. You could come up with a formula for who's going to win the race, right? Uh, it doesn't work because there's so many other factors in a horse race or in a football game or a hockey game than just stats. Okay, anyone that's ever done a hockey pool, um, you know, first player did, you know, 78 points last year. Uh, so this year, well, that was actually a rookie year. So now they're, you know, they've been playing obviously for a year in the NHL. So I'm expecting more points out of them. Uh, but if you, so if you went with last year's stats, not going to really apply and injuries, anyone that's ever been in a hockey pool has had, you'll have one player that gets injured. Okay. How can you like predict that with statistics It's impossible, right? So this is purely theoretical, but let's assume that Canada stays on its present pace. How many years will it take us to reach 50 million? I think it's a good question. Now, we're just going to fill in all the stuff we know. Now, here is my formula. P equals P naught times 1.01 to the N. So the population that we are wondering would be 50 million, right? So 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, equals... P naught or P now is 30 million, so 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, times 1.01 .01 to the N. Okay, so what is the first thing we would do? Divide 50 million by 30 million, right? Which should be 5 thirds equals 1.01 .01 to the N. Now, some of you are probably thinking right now, this is a little too simple a formula to figure out population of Canada, and it's, this is the one, okay? But the thing is, now you can understand, yeah, sometimes we do want to know N. You know, that's just not math for doing the sake of math, right? We do want to know the exponent quite a bit. And you'll see as we go through this unit, all of it is trying to find N. Um, if you're talking about the Richter scale, uh, the Bell scale, the pH scale, they are all, you know, like uh, when it says a earthquake of magnitude 7, anyone even know what that means? That means 10 to the 7th power. So the 7 is the exponent. Magnitude 3 means 10 to the 3. pH, pH of 6 means 10 to the 6. Okay, decibels, 
You may have heard of those. Okay, that's how you measure sound. Three decibel or 30 decibels is actually three bells. That would be 10 to the 3. Okay, so all of those are actually the exponent. And most of you probably even knew, didn't even know that the Richter scale is the exponent on the 10. That's what a 10 to the, or that's what a magnitude 5 means. 10 to the 5 power. And you start doing the math, and you see why 10 to the 9th is such a big earthquake. It's a lot of power. Okay, now, how would we figure this one out? What would we do? Yeah, so we're going to obviously turn it to log form. So n would equal log 1.01 to the 5 thirds, right? Because the n and the 5 thirds trait. So you're going to put log 5 thirds divided by log 1.01. And what do we get? 51.33. Three, four. Okay. So, what year would we reach 50 million? 20. Yeah, so 2052, we will reach a population of 50 million. Does anybody know why Canada has such a small population growth? Why? You, know, you would think that'd be more kids. No? It's one reason why. Because we have lots of money. The more money a country has, the smaller its population growth. No, it's not the other way around. The poorer they are, the, I mean, if you think about, if you have lots of money, it's very rare you have four children, okay? People that are professionals, they're doctors, they're, um, you know, like, where in the area that I live, there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of nannies at the park all the time because their parents are working, uh, but... There is not one doctor family that we have. There's probably about 10 that has more than two kids, okay? Because they're like four kids. I mean, we just wouldn't have the time. They're not sitting there. We couldn't afford it. It's the, but the richer a country is, the smaller the population growth. Now, you're thinking, oh, but the U.S., they have more money than us. No, they don't. Not per person, okay? We have, most of our homeless are due to you know, uh, not reasons of they don't have enough money. A lot of it is, uh, you know, either they're addicted to something or, you know, there's mental, right? But we don't have homeless people because we don't have enough money in Canada, right? Um, the U.S. actually has people that they can't get a job, they can't, I mean, if you want a job in Canada right now, pick. It may not be the most glorious one in the world, but pick. Like Edmonton, if you can't find a job in three days, you weren't looking, okay? So when you have lots of money, you actually have lower growth rate. Okay, number four. Now, I don't know how much time I want to spend with number four. I guess the biggest thing that you have to understand is E is not a variable. Just press E equals into your calculator. What is it? 2.7, 2. 2. blah, blah, blah. It's an actual number, okay? So, it's a number, it's like pi. Like, why is pi a number, right? It is a number that actually comes from a calculation, and you get E. It's used a lot in chem. No, in higher level chem. And physics. Okay? So, anyway, if you were to solve this one, what you want to do is you want to isolate this, right? And that would be, all you have to do is subtract 9 to each side. So you would get 7e to the negative 2x equals 
3, and divide by 7, divide by 7, e to the negative 2x equals 3 7 Okay, and then you can do it in log form, right, and get x by itself. So I could, I, I'm just thinking about, I can't actually say just money, it's uh, money and education. Okay, the higher educated, but they do go hand in hand. Okay, usually the more educated a country is, the more money it has too, because post secondary gives you higher paying jobs. Okay, now we're going to do something that we just did in uh, example one, but we're gonna there is basically four ways to be able to solve four x minus seven. So this is one way using the intersection method. Second way using the zero method, and then three. And four is the two ways I showed you how to do it algebraically. One, you could raise them uh, both to logs, or two, just change them to log form. Okay, but uh, I was curious in the last class. I just thought, oh, this was kind of an assumption. Do you want me to show you? And, the, and they're like, yeah, can you show us how to do this one? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do uh, it using the intersection method and then the zero. Now, the intersection method strictly states when you have 4x equals 7, make y1 to equal 4 to the x and y2 to equal 7. Okay, so let's get our calculators out and do that. Okay, so I'm going to do 4 to the x, which is nicely in there already, and clear this and put 7. And then we could hit zoom 6 too, so we're all Looking at the same graph. Now, the answer is right there. Okay? That is our answer right there. It is the x value. So what do you do? Second, calc, 5, right? And get the spider kind of close and hit enter, enter, enter. So 1.5. Or, this is, yeah, only to the nearest tenth, okay? So I'm just going to, since this is recorded, I'm going to just take a screenshot here. We'll put this here so we can see. And you can see the intersection is 1.4. Now, the other way is using the zero method. Now, I don't prefer the zero method, but sometimes. That's the way it is presented. So now the way you do the zero method is you have four to the x equals seven. The zero method is make it equal zero. Okay, so I'm minus seven, minus seven. Four to the exponent of the x minus seven equals zero. Then you go to your calculator and clear and clear. And I am going to go four exponent x. Oops, exponent x minus 7. Now, do you see how putting the exponent in brackets is important if I want that entire thing? Because this means 4 to the x minus 7, right? This is really what I want. If you don't put that in brackets, um, there, this is the way it means. If you do put it in brackets, it means the entire exponent. So you can see how they're very different. Then you hit graph. You get this. Okay? Now, this is the answer. Where does it equal zero? And remember, this zero stands for the y value. So then you use second trace. This time we're going to use number two, zero. That's the name. So what you want to do is you want to get to the left side of the zero and hit enter. Then you get to the right side of zero, hit enter, and then you hit enter one more time. And you get the same answer. Okay. 
And I'm not going to go through the algebraic ways because we know how to do those. Okay, so the assignment is 1AC, 3AC, 5, 6, 7B, and 10 to 15. Okay, and a little surprise for you. Yes, we are doing two lessons today. Why is because of time. But as the units get harder, there's less double lessons. So I think there's maybe only two more this year after this. Okay, so now, and this one's because of the play on Wednesday that you guys are, are not missing math, but the afternoon will miss math, right? Citadel, yeah? No? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Some people are looking at me like I'm crazy right now, and some people are like, oh, yeah, okay. So your class will get Wednesday and Thursday to work on the practice tests, okay? So you actually get two days of review next week. So consider this an investment in your education. Okay, so this one, applications in finance. This is the next huge application that exponents are used. And we're going to go right to page 244 because the reason I'm not on page 244 yet. The reason that this is quite valuable is when you use this formula right here. A equals P 1 plus I to the N. Now, I know you've seen that before. And it has been very rare that you've ever had to solve for N. And if you had to, you would use guessing and testing or you would use Y1, Y2 graph. Okay. So now we're going to do it using logs. Now, what does A stand for? That represents all the money I have at the end. P stands for the principal. That's all the money I start with. I stands for the interest rate per compounding period. Now, that gets a little tricky. N stands for the number of compounding periods. Okay? So, let's just do some of this chart right now. Now, if you had $1,000 invested for five years at a rate of 6%, Complete the table. Okay. Now, how many compounding periods in one year? So we're just doing per year right now. Just think about one year. How many compound periods would be in that year if you compound it annually? One. How about semi annually? Two. How about quarterly? Four quarters in a year, right? How about monthly? Twelve. Four quarters is how many months? One quarter, I should say, is how many months? Three, okay? That gets confusing to people. They want to think one quarter is four months. And I'm like, no, it's not. And they're like, yeah, four and quarter mean the same thing. No, there's four quarters in a dollar, but they're 25 cents for a quarter, right? So three months equals a quarter. Now, I know that is going to mess some of you up. So write this down. Okay, three months equals a quarter, just like 25 cents equals a quarter of a dollar. Okay, now in five years, how many compounding periods would be if we compounded annually? Five, semi annually? Ten, right? Because five times two is ten. How, about, how many compounding periods would be if we combat a quarterly? So 5 times 4 and 60, okay? Now the next one I want to do is they always give you annual interest rate. Well, if they gave me annual interest rate, annually, that's what the interest rate would be per annum. But semi-annually, 
means what would their interest be in each compounding period? So you would have to take 0 0.06 and divide by 2. Now quarterly, 0 0.06 and divide by 4. Monthly, 0 0.06 and divide by 12. And that would give me the interest rate per compounding period. So let's just do a nice basic one. Now instead of doing inventory, because I actually want to encourage you guys to learn how to put this into your calculator all at once. So I write down the formula first, P1 plus I to the N. Now, the amount is how much I will have at the end. Now they asked me to determine the value of the interest at the end. I don't know it then, obviously. The principle is what I start off with. I start off with 7,000. Now, 1 plus annual interest rate is 5%. Now, remember, we always change it to a decimal. But this is done quarterly. So then I will put a 4 underneath. Now, the 4 is not underneath the 1. It is just under the interest. So I'm not going to take 1 plus 0 0.05 and divide that all by 4. I'll take 1 plus this. Okay? Just so you always know that. And then, how many compounding periods would be in six years? Hmm? 24. So that's where I go. Six is the number of years times four. Now, see if you can put that all in once. Not take little chunks equals and then put this in equals and then do this equals. Because what happens is you'll be off by one cent. And being off by one cent on a numerical response is 100% wrong. Right? Makes sense. A little computer oh, didn't get the little bubbles filled in right. Goes on to the next one. It may just ask you, uh, calculate the number of cents would be after the dollars. Put it in the box. It could be that simple, right? And you did your rounding because you never round until the end. But how about you never round ever by just doing it all in one shot? Okay, what are we getting? See if we can get it right to the penny. We've got 9,000, right? Can we get that? And 46 cents, okay? That would be the correct answer. And make sure you put the little dollar sign there. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to get one that simple where it just asks you for A, okay? If this is the logs and exponents unit, you'd think that they would want us to use logs and exponents, okay? So here's, a, um, here's still not a good example because they're not asking if they want us to find the annual rate of interest, okay? So... A equals P times 1 plus I to the N. So Christine invested 2500 for four years. So I mean, I only received $843.26 in interest. What's her annual rate of interest? Okay. So what kind of things do we know for sure? A? What's A? Okay, what's P? 2500 good. Anything else? What is A? Good. Because what you have to do is you take these and you have to add them together because that is how much money I have. Okay? So, little arrow there. Now, I also have I don't know the I, but what goes under the I? And four times two goes up there. Now again, I need to find I. I is held captive quite a bit right now. I first have to divide by 2,500, right? So let's do this all in one step. So 3, 3, 4, 3.26 over 2,500. 
So that's not a 4.2k, that's 4 times 2. I don't like using the time sign because sometimes people think it's an x. Okay, so I've taken that out. So that's gone from that side. Now, I'm not doing any calculations yet. Stay away from your calculator. What would I have to do next? I've got to get i by itself. Yep. i over 2. Because I'm looking for interest. What would I do next, guys? So that's 8 over there. How do you get rid of an 8 as an exponent? Hmm? Yeah, the 8th root, but we, do, but we don't do it that way. We do it by not negative 8. <laughs> 8 to the negative 1, you're thinking. Okay, so 1 8th, right? So if I, now this is gone, right? Then what do I do? Because now we're just dealing with 1 plus i over 2, right? Yeah, you got a minus 1 to both sides. So now that's gone. So now you have i over 2 times everything by 2. Again, let's see if you can do it all in one thing. Anyone feel like throwing it out there? 7.4%, yep. Because you get 0 0.074, which is 7.4%. Okay. Barber invests 8 grand in account, pays compound interest, 6% per annum, compounded monthly. How long would it take in years and months for her investment to double in value? I think that's a very valid question. Okay, A five-year-old would ask that question. Oh, we're putting in the bank till it doubles. Well, how long? Yeah, that's the first question they get. How long is that going to take? I don't know. Banks do their banky thing, and then it comes out. Don't worry about it, right? But you can figure it out using this formula. Now, how much money are we talking about? 16,000, so P1 plus I to the N, okay? So I am looking for, finally, after all these questions, I'm actually looking for the N. That's my unknown. I know A is 16,000. I know P is 8,000. It's 1 plus I is 0 0.06 over... Twelve, good, to the n. Okay, first thing you do is divide the eight, and you're going to get two equals one plus zero point zero six over twelve to the n. Now I know right. I don't want that line over there. Now right away you're thinking I'm going to divide that all up first, and then now remember that is to the right ends up there. So we could right now log this, right? So this would be log, the base is 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 2 equals n. Of 2, I should say. So 2 is on the second level, right? So find it out. What would it be? Because it is compounded monthly.
So what do we get in as? What are we getting? Just give me what n is. Don't worry about thinking about 130. So 138 point whatever won't. So I have to make it 139 months, right? That's 139 compounding periods, correct? So that should be 139 months. Now, what would that be in years and months? Okay, 11.7, but we don't want to have 0.7 months. I want to know exactly how many months or 0.7 years. So I, I know that it would be 11 years and how many months? So there's two ways. You can go 11 times 12 now, find that out and subtract from 139. Or if you got 0.7, multiply that by 12. So put it in, how many months would that be? seven months. It was 0 0.6, right? Yeah. Yeah, you get 11.6 something, right? 5, 8. Okay, one more. Okay. Andrew borrows $7,500 from her parents to buy a new car. Her parents charge her interest at a rate of 4% compounded annually. Those are pretty awesome parents, eh? I, uh, I know some parents that are doing this with their kids, not this, but they're paying for their kids' education, which uh, is a great thing. But sometimes... I know this is weird to sound. Sometimes people, when they have it paid for them, they don't really work as hard or appreciate it as much as if it was their own money. So they have made a deal with their... Actually, my banker told me this when we were setting up our kids' uh, uh, education accounts or whatever, and he said that the best thing to do is say, okay, I will we'll pay for your education. Or no, we'll loan you this money, which you owe us all back. But if you graduate, that'll be your graduation gift. If you don't graduate, you owe us all that. And I think that's extremely fair. If you took three years of school and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to finish, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, then pay it all back, right? So I think that's a pretty good graduation present is, you know, if you, um, if you do get a degree, then that's your graduation gift. If you don't, you hand it back. This present, it... They're trying to teach their daughter some values, so they're going to charge her interest, compound it quarterly. When she pays off the loan, she would have paid $785 in interest. What would be the length of that loan? Now, remember this formula, A equals P1 plus I to the N. We've got to fill in some of those things. What can we fill in? What's A? 82, 85, okay? That's taking this. This is actually what she would have actually paid in the long run. Uh, P is 3,500, 1 plus 0 0.04 over 4, and that is to the N. Okay, again, now let's do this all in one step. This is what it would look like. 82.85 over 7,500 equals 1 plus 0 0.04 over 4 to the n. If I was to log this, this is what it would look like. Log, remember that entire base is 1.04, 1, 1 plus 0 0.04 over 4 to the, or of, 8285 over 7500 equals N. 
Now, why am I getting you to do this? You're like, oh, so I'm like doing it in little chunks because they may just leave it this way. They don't even know the answer. This may be C, right? And if you're like, crap, I've never done it that way. Like, I just did it in little chunks, right? Then I'd be kind of mad. Miss Trimble never taught, taught us how to do that. We just had to do it. We did it and then, right? So I'm trying to cover my bases here because when I go through that diploma, I never want that feeling, man, we never did any of these. That kind of sucks. That means I gave up one question for every single one of my students, right? That sucks. For me, anyway, because I didn't do my job. So I'm just trying to think, what if you just said, this is it, right? Because you can't even cheat. You can't even use your calculator, really. You would actually have to know how to do logs and have to know how to do the principal formula. So how many, what is, what's N? So we get 10 quarters, right? 10 compounding periods of, and they're all quarters. So, how many years would that be? That's a pretty good question, eh? How many years is 10 quarters? Hmm? No. First of all, how many months would that be? I'm hearing all this mumbling, but I'm not hearing the right answer. So, so 30 months, right? Which would be two and a half years, right? Okay. So we're doing five, seven, eight, ten, and eleven. Now, 